we see here the narration of Nehemiah talking about where he is, where his hometown is, where the state and the condition of his people are. We see Nehemiah having a burden. He felt a burden for his people. He felt a burden for his hometown. The first point that I want us to understand today, and I'll clarify it in a little bit, is that we must live with a burden. Write that down if you're taking out notes. You need to live with a burden. Have you ever heard the phrase, if you stand for nothing, you will fall for anything? We have come to a place in our world and a place in our society where people don't stand for anything. You ask them to define this or that, and they won't. But they'll defend this or that to their last breath. But they can't even define what this or that is. Are you hearing me? We live in a world where, where people will say they, they, they stand for this or that, but they don't know what they're talking about. If you do not stand for something, you will fall for anything. And Nehemiah was living out this process. He had a burden. What was Nehemiah's burden? Nehemiah's burden was that he felt for his people. He felt for his hometown. He understood that the people of Israel, and, and if you understand the history of here, Everybody who was living in Jerusalem, all of his people, they had been exiled by the Babylonians who, who conquered them. So they were like kicked out of their house. They were no longer allowed to live in their house. The only people who remained in Jerusalem at this time, because we saw that there was a remnant of the people of Israel in Jerusalem, the only people that were there at this time were the poor people, the, poor, the people that couldn't get out. The people that really didn't, didn't matter in the bigger scheme of things. Because when the Babylonians conquered them, they got all the important people out. But those people didn't matter. Are you seeing the picture of what is going on here? But Nehemiah heard from his friends. He said, hey, what's going on back home? And they come and they said, the city walls have been destroyed and the gates have been torn down. And the people who are there are in disgrace. I want to share with you guys that there are areas in our, in our lives where the walls are torn down, the gates have been destroyed, and the people living there are in disgrace. We must learn to live with a burden. If we have a burden... It will cause us to take action. It will cause us to do something about our current situation. Because here's something that we have to know that your burden defines your purpose. The problem with many of us is that we live with no burden. We don't care. How many of you guys in any area of your life have ever said, you know what? It really doesn't matter anyhow. Has anybody ever gotten to a place in your life where you say, oh, it really doesn't even matter? And nobody paying attention anyway. We've learned to live without burdens today. We've learned to live without cares. Like it doesn't matter anymore. We've grown indifferent. We don't really care. But it is essential, and I'm going to say this again, that we live with a burden because a burden will define your purpose. If you are finding yourself in a place where you don't know which way to go tomorrow, you don't know whether to change careers or stay where you're at. You don't know whether to change your, your, your course of study in high school or college or, 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 or stay where you're at. You don't know whether to do this or do that, whatever that is for you. We've got to learn that God's got a plan for us. We cannot be indifferent about it, and we must search out our burden. Back in um, 2018, some of you guys know the story, some of you guys don't. My, my wife and I, we were uh, part, obviously, of a ministry, our, our cover church, our cover ministry. Um, and we had been serving in that capacity for probably about 15 years. And in about 2018, my wife and I began to feel a call. We began to feel that, that, that there was a burden on our lives. 
that there was a need to do something different, that God had created us for something different than what we were doing. In our case, it was to start a church. It was, a, a burden looks like something that is always on your hearts, always on your minds, always on your spirits. For us, starting the church was a burden that we bared. We need to learn to have burdens that we bear. Our burden was to do what God was calling us to do, to be a bridge between communities, to be a bridge specifically between the white, the Latino, and the black communities. That's what God called us to do, to be a bridge between generations, between the young, the perfectly ripe middle age, and the old, anybody else in that age range that I just hooked up, right? It, we were called to do that. We were called to reach a people that we weren't reaching, to engage a people we weren't engaging, to hopefully make an impact in those people's lives. And this was a burden we were putting on. If you ask my wife and I, this is something we couldn't stop thinking about. Too many of us have no burden we don't know which way we're going. We don't know what we're doing. We don't know how we're going to get there because we don't know where we're going anyhow. We've got to learn to live with a burden. Your burden defines your purpose. And if you didn't know this, God's got a purpose for your life. Otherwise, there is no reason for us to be alive. But we need to learn to recognize our burden. How do we recognize our burdens? Because you might be saying, well, pastor, I'm not trying to start no church. That's okay. That might not be your burden right now. But what is your burden? Your burden is wherever your role is in this season. Let's start there. Okay? What God needs you to do right now in order for you to bear your burden so as to not drop that baton that we talked about earlier is to play the role where you are. Nehemiah had a specific role. You have a specific role, whatever that role is. If you are a husband or a wife, you need to play that role now. And I don't mean play that role like fake that role. I mean play that role like do that role. You understand? This, this is not play time. This, this is not let's act this out and, and, and make it look good. No. Do and fulfill your role if you are a husband or a wife. If you are a parent, do your role. If you are a son or a daughter, how many sons and daughters in the house? Raise your hand. That's a trick question. I should have seen everybody hand up. Think about it. I didn't say how many, how many sons and daughters in the house, right? If you are a son or a daughter, play that role. If you are a child still living or a teen still living in your parents' house, play that role. If you are a single adult, play that role the way you're supposed to play that role. If you are a boss or an employee, play that role the way you're supposed to play that role. Like you've got a role to play. The problem is we've given up, given up. we've stopped caring, we have thrown away the burden that we're supposed to bear. If you fulfill any of these roles or you fit into any one of these roles, you've got a burden to bear. Why? Because if you don't bear your burden, the walls will never be rebuilt, the gates will remain destroyed, the people who are living in that house will remain in disgrace. Are you hearing me? The burden will prompt you to build when you understand the burden. It will prompt you. When you've got something weighing on your heart, you're going to be encouraged to build. In our case, we were like, Lord, are you sure that's what you want us to do? We were comfortable. We were good. But yeah, we were sure that that's the burden that God had placed upon our heart. So we moved in that. We built that. A year and a half later, here's where we're at. And I want to tell you, this ain't where we're going to stay, so don't get too comfortable. Don't get too comfortable because that burden is still upon us. And that burden is not just for all of you who are here today. It's for those that couldn't make it, those that didn't want to make it, those that don't know they need to be making it. So we began to build a church, and, and that's why we're here today. Nehemiah's burden, what was his burden? His burden was to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. His burden was to restore glory to his hometown. Because if there was no glory in his hometown, God was not getting the glory he was supposed to be getting. 
Can I say, if there is no glory in your household, God is not getting the glory he's supposed to be getting. If there is no glory in the relationship between you and your kids, God is not getting the glory he's supposed to be getting. If when you go to work, they do not recognize that's a person of glory, then God is not getting the glory he's supposed to be getting.